Eurovision, baby! Yeah, Eurovision right now is under <laughs> siege from uh, pro-Palestinian uh, protesters, which, I, again, I, I have nothing wrong with people being uh, protesting, and, and, and it is wrong, I, and I feel that, you know, people are being indiscriminately blown to pieces in Israel, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, in Palestine, in Gaza. Let's just zero it down. I, I saw this video that was really good the other day about, uh, the guy was talking to somebody, and he asked, he said, if... Hamas was hiding behind the Israelis in Israel. Would Israel be bombing their own citizens as they are Gaza, which means indiscriminately dropping bombs on whatever and whoever uh, and having their AI shooting down civilians and such. So uh, their AI guns and stuff. You guys might have seen those videos going around. But um, I thought that was a really good point. And, you know, not that I know what the greatest way to go about this, and I'm no military expert, but it does seem a little shitty. But I do tend to, as much as I feel for the Palestinians, I do feel a little bit more uh, for our own people here in America. And so I, I've just sort of taken on the libertarian view of America first. Let Israel and Palestine and Russia and Ukraine work this shit out, okay? We got our own problems here. We have homelessness. We have an open border. We have a, 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 a an economy that is teetering like a house of cards. It's just wild shit that's going on over here. Uh, and so I would prefer not to be involved in these conflicts. But I do feel, you know, for the people. And I also feel for the folks in Yemen who are suffering. You know, uh, Syria, you know, five almost 500,000 people who are starving in Syria and dying. Congo. There's a lot of places. The Uyghurs in China who are basically slaves. I feel for all these people, but we can't be Captain Savaho here in the United States. We're not the world police. We shouldn't have never been the world police. And, you know, people are, are, are going back and saying, oh, well, no one called the United States terrorists when we were, you know, invading Iraq unjustly or, or Afghanistan. And, and yes, they were. I was calling us terrorists. <laughs> I was. I was actually protesting these wars, which come to find out they admitted that it was all for nothing. Right. So we we uh, people were definitely calling the United States terrorists and they were against it. We were protesting wars. We were protesting Blackwater uh, out in San Diego because they were going to build a uh, was it Blackwater. I think that is it. They're, they're the mercenary, like the private mercenaries that, that the government will hire to go in and do, you know, off the record, horrible things and war crimes, uh, and, you know, murdering and basically terrorism. Uh, and and I'm, I'm against all these foreign interventional intervention wars. Now, I know it was a it was a situation where we were attacked and we wanted vengeance and you know, when you find out that they all lie just to get us to go into Iraq and and take over and, and install our own government, steal all the resources, you know, you find out this, they actually admit it 20 years later, right, uh, that, that Iraq had nothing to do with that. You know, we were, we were going after, you know, supposedly Osama bin Laden, who was a... Uh, you know, who was trained by the CIA and who it's all very suspect, right? Like the whole 9-11 thing is very suspect, but I am getting off course here. Um, we were being called terrorists and uh, we were uh, just indiscriminately blowing people up. And there's the videos that uh, who, who was it? Was it Chelsea Manning? Was that who released all the videos of them just indiscriminately murdering people? Uh, videos or, or was it, I can't remember if it was Ed Snowden. Um, I don't think it wasn't Ed Snowden. It, it, I'm pretty sure it was Chelsea Manning through WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, right? And that's that that's they're still holding that against Julian Assange, who's still a political prisoner. Um, uh, where is he in the UK right now? I believe he's in the UK. I can't remember, but in, in any case, 
Um, so what's going on in Israel? I, I would say justify. It, it, it is somewhat of a genocide going on there, an ethnic cleansing. I don't see a peaceful solution ever really happening. Um, but I, I just I don't have any loyalty to Israel. Like, I don't care about Israel. Like, I care about America. And if America can get their shit together, then maybe we can go out and help people, right? And I, and honestly, like, I feel for the Palestinians. But as an American, like, I don't give a fuck, dude. I'm sorry that those people are dying. Uh, uh, but they also danced and, and celebrated when the planes crashed into the Twin Towers. So we're talking about people who generally hate America and Western culture and want to run um, Islam throughout the world, right? Like they, they, they're they part of that Islamic culture that wants to uh, make the world uh, Muslim. And, you know, the Christians want to do that. That's fine. You know, we, there's all kinds of religions that are trying to proselytize and convert, right? It's fine. Um choose and believe whatever you want to believe it's it's totally fine i just i don't see why we want to run and rush to the aid of people who hate us but again i do feel for the people and it doesn't mean that i don't see those pictures of dead babies being pulled out of rubble and something isn't triggered inside us because as much as people don't want to think about it it is something that can happen here in america um you know, you have one economic downturn, people scrambling. We already have, sure, uh, surely we have tons of terrorists already in this country from our open borders. I mean, anything can happen to where we're all just, we are scrounging amongst the rubble just to stay alive. So anything can happen and people should understand that. And that's why people should uh, definitely be preparing for worst case scenarios here in America because anything can happen. EMP could come by and shut down our power grid. They could just shut our power grid off just from computers and such. So I, I do support the, the, the student protests that are going on right now. They are definitely, you know, it is an American tradition for universities to have these protests. And I, I have no problem with that. What I have a problem with is this open and rampant anti-Semitism that's going on where you're having people blocking Jews from going to going to school, uh, you know, calling for the death of them from the river to the sea uh, that that that's calling for a mass genocide of the Israelis. So I, I don't like that these kids find it OK or and a lot of people, not just these kids. We have these, you know, white supremacists who are like, yeah, fuck the Jews. Uh, who are like, yeah, you know, like, uh, get rid of the Jews, yeah, you know, like, it, an enemy of my enemy is our friend, right? So you have people who are on the extreme right and and who are white supremacists, who are like David Duke, who are supporting Palestine uh, strictly because they don't like Jews, right? But they don't like the Palestinians either, right? So it's it's interesting. It's interesting. They don't like the Jews more than the Palestinians. It's like Hitler. He was like, you know what? Japan, they're not pure blood, but, you know, we'll accept them. I respect their culture. <sighs> Anyways, all of that to say, I support protests in all forms and fashion. But once it comes down to blatant anti-Semitism, violence, destruction of property... And, and illegal activity, then there has to be some kind of boundary and lines that can't be crossed in that sense. Otherwise, we have lawlessness, which is pretty much what we have going on on these universities, which is okay. I'm going to cough, so I'm going to mute that. I'm sorry, guys. I do have a bit of a cold. It sucks so much ass to be sick. I have so much to do we have to move all the studio and stuff over to our new house that we're going to be moving to by june and we got a lot to do but i decided to jump on here record this video because um you know it, it's a little bit quicker for me to do this than it would be to uh stream and inter interact with chat and all that stuff because we get really sidetracked on that not that we don't get sidetracked right now because that's exactly what's happening Anyways, let's jump into our story. It is Univision or Univision <laughs> Eurovision. Uh, let, let's let's get over there. 
Eurovision thousands protests against Israel's entry in Malmo. So Malmo is in Sweden, and we have a bunch of people there who are, you know, trying to give voice to the voiceless. And that's I, I'm always going to support peaceful protests, always, even if I don't agree with what they're doing. I don't agree with the white supremacists who are walking around in this, what is North Carolina or something or Georgia somewhere a couple weeks ago. I don't agree with them. I think they're abhorrent assholes, but I, I would die to protect their rights to do it and call me a white supremacist if you want, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's something that I strictly believe that we have the right to peacefully protest and the same amount of of love goes out to, uh, I have no love for the white supremacists, my bad. The same amount of support goes out to these folks who uh, are supporting uh, Gaza and Palestine. Thousands of pro-Palestinian demonstrators gathered on Thursday in the Swedish city of Malmo to protest against Israel's participation in the Eurovision Song Contest. It came as the city hosted the competition's second semi-annual in which Israel's uh, entrant, Eden Golan performed. On Wednesday, Miss Golan was booed during a rehearsal of her song, Hurricane, but the crowd's response was more mixed on Thursday with cheers and some boos. So let's, uh, <laughs> I do have that pulled up. And, you know, I feel for this performer because she's just like, I I'm just trying to perform, you know, like, fuck, bro, give me a break. Uh, and, and we'll actually, we're going to watch a few videos on what's going on over there. And so here is, this might be, I'm not sure, I think this was the actual broadcast, but let's listen in. Let me make sure this thing can blow our ears out. Listen. <laughs> Yeah, and this looks like it, this must have been the her, the rehearsal of the song. And, you know, I'm not, you know, nothing against this young lady. So the Palestinian flags are officially banned from the Eurovision event, which is kind of weird. Flags from the Israel of the state committing genocide. Okay, we, we know that. Are allowed. So Israel, you can fly their flags. But the, the EBU, which is the European Broadcasting Union, Call, uh, calls it to be non-political, which no matter what, if you have a flag of the star, David, you are making it very political. So we have, um, that was a little bit of them booing. If you're listening on the, uh, uh, on the podcast, on the podcast uh, feed, then uh, you can't really see what's going on, but you can hear the boos and the free Palestine. Here is like, I, I believe this is from the actual broadcast. Wow, she's bending over all crazy. But she's a a dynamite in the sack. You can hear booze mixed in. So you can you can hear some booze mixed in, and um, you know there's a lot of people who are upset because. They're kind of saying that Israel is not really European, so why are they even participating in Eurovision unless they see themselves as part of Europe? And that is part of the problem, right? They want uh, the Jews to go back to Europe and not be Middle Eastern and not be in uh, where Palestine was. Because it was a uh, imperial colonial takeover of a land back in 1948, I believe. It was a war, and there were people displaced, and that's what happened. There's no doubt about it. I'm not saying that Israel doesn't deserve to exist. They went in. They were backed by the UN. They had the right people. They had the troops, and they murdered their way into a state. It's kind of what we did here in the United States, and I don't see us giving our land back to the Native Americans, and I don't see the Native Americans giving the natives that they stole the land from previously to them back to them. You know, how far back do we go? Do we have tribes giving back other tribes' land? You know, it, it, it's, it happened. It's what happened. War is awful. Israel invaded. They won. 
that's how history is written. And I understand that that doesn't sit well with a lot of folks. And, uh, you know, you don't have to agree with me on that, but this is just where we're at, folks. This is just where we're at. So uh, let's get back over here. I'm going to cough again. Hold on. So coming back to our article here, um, ahead of Ms. Golan's performance, pro-Palestinian protesters and a smaller number of pro-Israeli protesters took to the streets. Right. Well, there's not as many Israelis as there is <laughs> others. Right. And even our girl. Oh, shit. Hold on. <laughs> How dare you? Our girl, Greta Thunberg, was among those attending the pro-Palestinian demonstration, which Swedish police estimated had as many as 12,000 participants. <laughs> this is what I love about this whole, like, split left thing, because we have uh, artists and singers. They tend to be politically driven or at least left leaning. And right now the left owns the pro-Palestinian movement, uh, especially here in the States where you have George Soros, who is funding a uh, part of these protests, which is very interesting. Another thing that was interesting is a BBL, a BBL, <laughs> BBL <drizzle. laughs> no, uh, Black Lives Matter is suing uh the the soros owned i can't remember the name of the company but they're suing them for not giving them money so it's so funny but yeah some of these protesters are getting like seventy eight hundred dollars a week or something to protest and be loud and obnoxious and break shit i get i i don't know we're not here to talk about that but it is interesting right you have it, it does play into the idea that the left is so fractured in this, right? The, it, and it's fractured the right, too. Like, this this one conflict is fracturing so many of these, these bubbles that people have been living in for years. Because it was like, I hate Trump, and I hate the Republicans, or I hate those Democrats and those liberals. They're both corrupt assholes, if we're talking about the United States. But... It is funny to me to see, like, the Met Gala got invaded by <laughs> by uh, pro-Palestinian uh, uh, protesters as well. And I can't stand that they're calling them anti-Israel, which, it, yeah, they are it, They are in part anti-Israel, but it's pro-Palestinian, or they're pro-Hamas, which some are pro-Hamas. Let's not kid ourselves. There are people saying, you know, they're, they support Hamas and saying death to Israel, death to America. Some of these kids, some of these agitators are saying that, which, you know, let them say what they want. This is America. Uh, but, I, you know, I don't agree with death to America because I live here. I have children. I enjoy my life. And I enjoy the fact that people have a chance to, to, to make a decent life for themselves here and there's a reason why everybody's flooding the border and coming in here. <sighs> Anyways, fucking go America. America number one, America first. That's where I stand. Sorry. Fuck the rest. Fuck them all. I'm not here for it. Let's just concentrate on getting America back to where it should be. You know, let, let's fix our roads. Let's fix our infrastructure that's antiquated, right? Let's, let's get our shit together, and then we can help people again. It's But we are just so reliant on foreign aid, foreign imports. We're, we've allowed fucking our country to become an oligarchy where only the richest corporations have the power to make laws and shit. It's fucked up. I'm not saying they're the only ones because we definitely still have some power here, and that's what's great about it, but they, it's quickly dwindling but let's stay on task here uh let, let's find our girl greta our girl greta i'm sorry i don't have these more organized but um let's look at some of the protest out what, what is it this is eurovision um, the police here at so there's some violence going on people are making a chain basically cornering the protesters in big, big numbers here in Sweden. What's going on, And of course, you have people getting arrested for, you know, act, being violent, agitating, you know, you peacefully protest, but you can't be violent. And, and, 
So and here, especially in the United States, there have been some heavy handed police action going on as well. So, you know, I'm not saying that it's just the fucking protesters doing terrible thing or, or agitating people. The cops are coming in and being heavy handed, too. Let's not pretend like that doesn't happen. OK, folks, let's not pretend. OK, so that's just what's going on. Let, let's find our girl Greta. Um, Here you go. They just send an excusable for you here to show that we think it is outrageous and inexcusable for Eurovision to let Israel participate while committing a genocide. Yes, it's a song contest where where Israel, a country that is currently committing a genocide in Gaza, are allowed to compete. How dare you? Yeah, that is a very clear example that does say that when a country accepts in a way that when a country uh, behaves in a way that is inex unacceptable, then Eurovision excludes them. So why not Israel? Here to show that we think so Greta out there doing her thing. God bless her. She's, she's a little sweetheart, but it's <laughs> she is annoying. And I feel like she don't know shit about anything, really. But it's okay. It's okay. Like she's doing what she believes in. She's made a career out of it. She's doing her thing, and you know, I'm not gonna hate. Uh, I mean, I will. I'll make fun of her, but <laughs> it's only because she. I mean, look at look at her eyes. Doesn't her eyes look a little spectrumy? I, I feel like they're. She's a little spectrumy. Um, let me see here. So here is some. Uh, there are some questions being asked the performer that uh, people are cringing at, but let's hear some of the questions that are being asked to this artist, which I, I worried about. In that. fact, I don't feel that it's fair to come down on this artist so hard. Uh, she's just a singer. She's trying to do her thing. And obviously she's Israeli. Her country was invaded. I mean, I understand if she, where if she sits where she sits, but she's very the, the the guy next to her has to be her publicist or something, and he's sort of like in her ear too, so she can't really speak how she truly feels. But she is, you know, she is saying stuff. So let's hear what they're talking about. Uh, some of the uh, the press, the so called press, uh, asking questions to. Uh, the young lady from Israel. I, I forgot. Gallum, Gollum, whatever her name is. How does it feel, Eden? How does it feel? It feels great. Thank you so much, guys. And what is your message for the world and for the other contestants who are worried about safety? Um, share love. And how are you coping with it all? How do you feel about qualifying? Look at look at how uncomfortable he got. Feel about safety. I hate like I hate these people who are in other artists' ears. Which look, some artists should probably not be telling their truths, you know. But and some people do need coaching because you're talking about a lot of young people who might not have their ideas fully formed yet. And then when they're actually put on the spot, they can they can end up saying stupid shit that they don't actually mean, but they just have a bad way of explaining it. I understand I was young once, still am young at mine, still am trying to figure out the best way of communicating how I feel about things. It's just a work and process that we all are working on as developing human beings. But let, let, let's let her answer these questions. I feel amazing. I'm so grateful for everyone who supported me and voted for me. And um, my love is endless to you all. Thank you so, so, so much. It means the world to me. And then how does it feel that Netherlands and you uh, asked you to actually answer the question. I did. I did. Yeah. I did. Are you, are you ever uncomfortable with everything that's going on? Thank you. No, I feel I feel great and I feel like I'm at the right place at the right time and I'm doing my job and I'm. Uh, and, and even do you want the war to end? Even, even when people are doing. This is not a question, man. Look, and she steps in. A producer comes and steps in. He's like, hey, you better not ask her pertinent questions. That. <laughs> <laughs> you know that people are probably going to want to know because because there is such a drawback and su uh, and and backlash on the invasion uh, that's going on in Gaza and the retaliation I should say um of course people are going to want to know what she feels because there's so much controversy surrounding the fact that Israel is participating again we're talking about a country that is middle eastern participating in a eurocentric uh competition 
So I do get their point. It's like, what? Are you European? Are you Middle Eastern? What the fuck are you guys doing over here? I get that aspect. Do I think that they should be able to perform? Yeah, fuck it. Like, it's not this girl's fault of what's going on. Whether she supports what's happening or not, it's not her fault that there were that it wasn't her direct fault that people decided to go and invade their country and do horrible things, kill fourteen hundred people, and capture a bunch of uh, hostages. It wasn't her fault that that happened, and now her government, who was who was a corrupt government, anyways. You have Netanyahu, who is uh, who who was on his <laughs> who was being protested in mass months before this attack. People were already upset with them. People in Tel Aviv are protesting this shit. They want a ceasefire now. And now you have uh, Hamas, who is saying that they're willing to negotiate. Uh, they're willing to come to the table for a ceasefire. Uh, but we just had BB saying that we will stand alone if we have to, and we're going to finish the job. They are determined to get that beachfront property, as Kushner said. They are definitely trying to get that beachfront property, um, the resources, and, of course, access for a canal that's going to go in there. It is in their best interest to uh, continue this war and uh, you know, get rid of the Palestinians, which I think is horrible and terrible and um you know, again, I feel for these folks. It's an awful thing that they're suffering through. Uh, and I feel for the people in Yemen, for the people in Syria, for the people in China, the Uyghurs. I feel for a lot of people, right? I feel for a lot of people out there. It, it, um, it, it's a sad situation. All these situations are very sad. So anyways, let's hear this. There's more uh, grilling, if you will, of... Uh, our sweetheart from, and she's kind of, she's really hot actually. She's pretty hot. So, if you were asking me smash or pass, I was like smash. But you know, <laughs> all right, let's let's see what's going on. Personal question: Have you ever thought that by being here, you bring risk and danger for other participants and public? In what way? You don't have to answer that question if you want. Don't want to. Look, he's Why not? If you want to. If you want to answer. She Please. does. Um, I think we're all here for one reason and one reason only. And uh, the EBU is taking all safety precautions uh, to make this a safe and, uh, and united place for everyone. And um, so I think it's safe for everyone. And we wouldn't be here. <laughs> she just basically repeated herself over and over again. Again, when you look at her, she's young and she's, I'm guessing English might be a second language for her. Uh, I think she expresses herself well and she does well with standing on her own two feet. Uh, again, whether or not you agree with her, whether or not you think that her presence there is dangerous, I honestly see it being more dangerous for from protesters and extremists, extreme leftists who might come in and try to, you know, cause some trouble um, or even terrorism. But it, I don't think that just by her presence, she should be living in fear. That's the point of terrorism is that they want to strike fear into people to get them to do what they want, to bend to their will. And fuck that. Fuck terrorists. Fuck terrorism. Uh, not with it and why should people adhere to that why should we all have to live in fear because of something that might happen if it's gonna happen it's gonna happen and her presence there is uh it, it, she shouldn't have to feel like that's her fault uh now if it did happen because she was there then obviously <laughs> something's going on uh and, and of course i feel for her but you can't live your life like that. You can't live your life based on fear. It doesn't work out very well, as we saw from, uh, as we still see from the the uh, the blowback from the the pandemic here in America. You see all these kids with masks on, which in part are is for solidarity, and in part, and I think they have masks on for the protesters too. Part of it's solidarity. Part of it's. COVID, but it's probably mostly uh, just to 
try to conceal their identities because they're I don't know ashamed of what they're doing. If you were if if you were proud of your protest, then you don't have to cover your face. You should be able to do it. Um, but then I also see the other side of that where, you know, some people might be targeted by you know, pro-Israeli or Israeli folks, and they're just trying to protect themselves. And, and so I see what's going on here. I know that this is all fence-sitting, but uh, I, I don't think that this woman should be blamed for anything that happens at this festival or at this competition. She's just there to sing, right? I mean, she could just be like, I don't want to participate because I'm boycotting, but I, I mean, I don't blame her. I know what it's like to be a young, hungry musician. Um, let's see here. So um, a Belgian channel in, Bel in, in Belgia <laughs> uh, interrupts Eurovision to address Israel's genocide. And they put a warning up here. This is a union action. We condemn the human rights violation committed by Israel. Additionally, Israel is destroying press freedom. That is why we are pausing the broadcast for a moment. And I believe they interrupted. Uh, I, I'm not sure if they interrupted Israel's performance when this was happening. But this is something that Belgium did, which was very interesting that they took a stance as a network and you know that's not new i guess but it's interesting um so what what there was some other stuff i wanted to get to here uh let's go back over to the article uh climate activist blah 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 uh, she told, so this is from Greta. She told BBC that there was a more obligation to act. Yeah, we know, we know. Another protester, Matilda Verada, told Reuters news agency that she would like to see Israel disqualified as Russia was in 2022 following its full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Now, this is uh, another debate that's going on uh, that because they banned Russia when they invaded the Ukraine, why aren't they invading or, or why aren't they banning Israel? And I would say like straight off the bat is that Israel was invaded. <laughs> they had a horrible terrorist attack against them. And whether or not you think that was justified, which, you know, I, 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 I can see why the guy, uh, why the Palestinians feel like they are cornered, especially when you're living under such subjugation as they are. Uh, I, I can see where revolt comes out of that. It always comes out of the downtrodden. That's just how it works. You, you, you oppress a certain amount. You oppress people enough and they feel they have nothing to lose, then, of course, they're going to uh, react. Uh, it's not true that the Eurovision is not political. It has always been political and it will always be, she said. Earlier, Ms. Golan... Earlier, Ms. Golan said that she was proud to represent my country and that nothing will deter her. I'm focused on music, on a good, on the good energy, and there are so many people supporting me. And I feel I have such an honor to represent my country, especially in these times. Uh, so this whole Russian debate thing is interesting, right? It's a um, where is it? Oh, where is it? I thought I had a... Oh, yeah, we got to talk about this girl. I love <laughs> this girl's interesting. Uh, hold on, guys. Let me find it. Brush. Um, here we go. Brush. Get out of here. I don't want that. Reject. Oh. So they make a – this article is based on what they were talking about, how they um, – Eurovision hypocrisy over Russia and Israel must be called out. Obviously, this is somebody who feels strongly in one way, so it's an opinion piece. Hold on. So um, – 
I hope I'm not alone in welcoming Steph Patton's article. Boycott Eurovision is a small, ne nece uh, but small but necessary. I'm going to look as if there's a boycott that I can use, or maybe start one in an effort to show the gar uh, and garner further support for Palestine. Yes, it would be a small act compared to say the students, marchers, the students and marchers across the world, but the hypocrisy generated since October seventh from the in effectual hand wringing and uh, to continued arms and munition sales and now as s Patton says the art washing of daily death and destruction my god that is a, uh, <laughs> so the layering of membership and the functions of the ebu are multi uh, are multitude and frankly unctuous well, I don't know what that word is. In the union's ability to look, look away, and overlook. Membership of the EBU is for broadcasting organizations whose countries are within the European broadcasting area, as defined by the International Telecommunication Union. Um, Israel was permitted entry into Eurovision more than 50 years ago because the country's national broadcaster was and is a member of the EBU. Um... The EBU announced that it had conducted a recent review and concluded Eurovision was not a contest between governments and that Israel had not broken any rules. Russia, however, was excluded from recent Eurovision contests because of the way its broadcasters had flouted membership obligations. It would appear there are varying degrees of membership obligations, causing 30,000 plus deaths does not appear to fit the scope of flouting obligations. But then on Sunday, May 5th, Israel shut down Al Jazeera's operations in Israel and seized some of its communication equipment. Freedom of the press, freedom of speech. Will, will the EBU respond? And that is a good point because Israel does tout themselves, and although they don't directly have freedom of speech, and part of the reason why the government was being protested against in mass before the attack on October 7th was because they were trying to strip away more freedoms from the citizens there. Um, I can't remember the exact details. I believe it had something to do with giving the Senate all power there or the, or, or the prime minister full power. I can't remember exactly what it was. So don't quote me on that, but it was stripping away more freedoms, giving the government more power, which is the antithesis to freedom. Um, the UN Secretary General spokesperson Stefan, whatever that says, has already condemned the closure of Al Jazeera by noting a free press provides an invaluable service to ensure that the public is informed and engaged. If the free press is actually reporting, you know, freely um like america most of the legacy media here is uh you know working directly for the government so um even though they go under the guise of a free media it, it's just uh, they're just mouthpiece for our government here um you have to uh, look to independent media if you want any kind of real News here in America, the UN Secretary Jean, okay, we just went that, and how ironic the Foreign Press Association, based in Israel, said the move was a dark day for democracy and cause for concern for all supporters of free press, which is true. Al Jazeera is, uh, you know, it's famously an Arabic, I believe it's Arabic uh, company, and so they tend to lean more towards uh, the Palestinian side of the story, which is important, however corrupt this this company is, I don't know if they are corrupt or not, but if they are, because I'm just used to these news organizations being corrupt, it, it's important to have both sides of the story, and that's what's important to me as well. So when I'm looking at stuff, I'm looking at Fox News, I'm looking at Al Jazeera, I'm looking at Israel Times, I'm looking at all these different articles because I want to know what both sides are saying, and then try to find some sign, you know, come to some sort of conclusion from there. The Committee to Project Protect Journalists said it sets an extremely alarming precedent for restricting international media outlets working in Israel. This is the same committee that concluded preliminary investigations showed at least 97 journalists and media workers have been killed since the war began. It was only fitting that the committee issued the information on May 3rd, long ago designated the World, world Press Freedom Day. Mm, that's interesting. 
Uh, there is no doubt the hypocrisy of banning Russia, but not Israel, will taint the Eurovision ideals for years to come. There's no justification for the continued presence of Israel at this event, given the uh, egregious ethnic cleansing genocide being perpetrated in Gaza against the people. Uh, the West has abandoned all decency in its complicis complicity uh, with the far-right racist Netanyahu regime. <coughs> Uh, and, and so this is obviously a fucking politically driven uh, um, article. You know, this was an opinion piece. Uh, Non-political, my arse. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what it says here. My arse. Um, so, you know, there is a hypocrisy, but I don't, I don't really see it. I don't, you know, like if they let, Israel into the EBU 50 years ago, then that's just a part of it. Um, Russia, you know, I, I feel like it's just a different situation altogether only because Israel, like, it's like people want to jump and skip past the idea that four, 1,400 Jews were murdered, innocent Jews were murdered uh, before they started retaliating against uh, Gaza. And the Palestinians. So that's a big, that's an important point that they're just sort of skipping right over. And that's bothersome, I suppose. Uh, but, you know, that's where we live. You got to pick a side, I guess. Also, so people weren't allowed to fly any um, Palestinian flags. So a lot of people were upset. And um, one of the people. <laughs> This lady is awesome and interesting. I think it's very funny. Um, I think she's probably young and weird and whatever. Eurovision required a non-binary Irish singer to remove pro-Palestine messages before performing. Now, this is such a loaded... This is so loaded, right? Eurovision required. So you were forced. A trans person, someone who was already oppressed in this world. Look at this white girl. Look at how white this bitch is. Look at this. <laughs> And she has her little slave. How oppressed is this woman? And so they're painting out an, an oppressed, protected group of people who had to remove a pro-Palestine message before performing. Uh, the European Broadcast Union reportedly told non-binary Irish musician Bambi Thug <laughs> to remove pro-Palestine pro -Palestine messages from their costume. Uh, using a early medieval on oh, let me do it. using the early medieval Irish alphabet Ogham, the singer songwriter wrote words ceasefire and Saris Don Felistin. I don't know the latter of which translates to Irish Gaelic freedom for Palestine on their face and legs per the Irish examiner. But before Bambi Thug took stage in Malmo, Sweden on Tuesday night, they were ordered by the European Broadcasting Union to change the markings before the performance. Now, I find this disconcerting only because I feel like they should be able to freely do the things they want to do. I feel like these people should be able to express their feelings on what's going on, right? They're participating in something they f that, that they don't agree with Israel being there. They have the right to do that, I think, you know, but this is Europe. They don't have freedom of speech like we do here in America. But, of course, I'm American. Fuck yeah. They should be able to express themselves. You shouldn't be able to, to hold them down because you don't like their message or you don't agree or whatever bullshit excuse you want to come up with. <coughs> if these people want to do it, they should be able to. Um Let's see. But before uh, blah, 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 the Ogham alphabet is represented by various. OK, we get it. Uh, when asked about the message at a post show press conference, the artist said they included was very important to me because I'm pro justice and pro peace. Unfortunately, I had to change those messages today to crown the witch only in order from the EBU. They said a reference to a phrase that has become something of a campaign slogan for them as they compete in the multinational contest. Now, uh, <laughs> let's see that this, um, this you've girl's chosen crazy. Ogham writing uh, in your face and on your leg as a part of your stage uh, costume. And the words are ceasefire and freedom for Palestine. 
why uh, was it important for you to include those hidden messages in your stage hidden. costume? Um, it was very important for me because I am pro-justice and pro-peace. Um, unfortunately, I had to change those messages today to crown the witch only <laughs> in order from the EBU. So, thank you. It's okay to put, to say, uh, I'm a witch, I'm a Satanist, uh, I'm a transgender queer, whatever. But to express yourself and support for essentially innocent people being bombed to, to, to the Stone Age. Uh, a lot of people want to say that Palestine is Hamas, right? And you're finding out more and more that Hamas is kind of this terrorist organization that pushed themselves onto the Palestinians. And that the pa and that there's a lot of Palestinians that actually don't care for Hamas. I couldn't imagine Palestinians wanting to be bombed. They had to have known if they it, that this would happen. Now, you know, there it's it's a complicated thing. Palestine isn't really a country. It's not really recognized, right? It, it's kind of recognized by the UN, but it's just sort of this gray area where people just sort of exist, and it's it, it's kind of a fucked up situation. So Hamas. That's what I'm being told by people who are from Israel or at least have experience in Israel and, you know, you know, reading other articles and such that they're not necessarily. Is that true? I don't know. Did they dance and celebrate when 9-11 happened, the Palestinians? Yeah, they did. There's videos of them just dancing around being like, yay, death to America, which is like, fuck you guys. <laughs> that's not, and that's not why I'm saying fuck them, because I do have empathy for people who are just being murdered indiscriminately, but... Uh, essentially, uh, most of these people don't like the gays, <laughs> and there's a lot of gays. Like this woman, right? This woman right here, who is non-binary, would would not be accepted. She if she came into Palestine like this in the Gaza Strip, looking like that, <coughs> she would be stoned to death <laughs> in a minute, right? To be thrown off the nearest roof. Uh, this is this is not acceptable in, in that culture. So I don't know why that she would want to be uh, why people want to support that if they they know that. I, you know, I saw a video where this gay dude was like, "Yeah, I that argument sucks because I don't care if they don't accept me." Because fucking I, I I still stand up for those who are oppressed even if they don't like me, which is honorable. But if you went there, you would be murdered, homie. Like doesn't that that don't bother you? That that's not offensive to you. You live in a country where you are free to you know fuck whoever you want, express yourself however you want. Um, but if you went to the actual country that you're willing to, you know, march in the streets for and put your life on the line, that they would they wouldn't like you. They would hate you. And in fact, maybe even kill you. Fuck that. A spokesperson, a spokesperson for the EBU told the examiner that the body markings con uh, contra contravened. What is that? Contravened. Contravened. I don't know if I'm saying that. Contraven contest rules that are designed to protect the non-political nature of the event. If it was non-political, then they wouldn't have excluded Russia from it 20 in 2022. And so there is a point there, right? Like there is a there is something to that where if you're not gonna allow Russia for invading another country that is politically driven, then you know, what the fuck? Obviously, it is political. After discussions with the Irish delegation, they agreed to change the text for the live show, the spokesperson added. EBU also expressed regret that Swedish con uh, con uh, uh, contestant Eric Saad wore a kafia, which is, the, I believe, the scarf, uh, excuse me, on his arm during the opening act. Once again, citing the non-political nature of the event, the garment is a symbol of Palestinian identity and has been adopted by people around the world as a way of showing solidarity with the people of Gaza, which are those scarves, right? Those are kind of cool, man. I like those scarves. They look kind of sexy, I guess. And um, you've chosen Ogham writing. Uh oh, they posted the same video twice. Okay, cool. 
I'm trying to find <laughs> I'm trying to find the video where she's <laughs> she oh I do have that queued up. Never mind. Despite the EBU's claim that Eurovision is a non-political event, the competition excludes okay, and here they're talking about, right? They excluded Russia in 2022 due to the invasion of Ukraine. Uh right. So of course Eurovision faced widespread calls to ban Israel from the competition this year, which we covered. Uh there was some Swedish uh, artists who were rallying the troops and stuff early on in, I believe, in January. Uh, Eurovision faced widespread calls to ban Israel from the competition this year, including separate open letters from hundreds of Swedish and Belgian musicians. When it became clear that EBU would not exclude Israel from participating, LGBTQ plus organizations around the world called for broadcasters, computer, com, uh, com, computer, competitors jesus workers and viewers to boycott the annual song contest so yeah that was trending on twitter and i'm wondering if it still is Let, let's go look real quick let's see it let's see if it's trending on twitter to boycott uh yep right here still going still going and showing friends boycott eurovision so that is still trending People are still um, not doing that. Uh, who is this? Thank you, Macklemore, for being one who will. Yeah, Macklemore released a, uh, a song, a pro-Palestinian song, by the way. Um, anyways, let's uh, come back here. Oh, wait, no, that's not it. Dummy. Uh, so there is a boycott Eurovision going on. And <laughs> Bambi Thug. This girl, I mean, this they, I guess, she's non-binary, or they are non-binary. I'm trying, folks. I'm trying. So this is Sky uh, News, who is, they're, they're definitely uh, a right-leaning organization. This lady's definitely going to make fun of her, which, rightfully so, it's really funny. So let's just check it out. Now let's see who the good people of Ireland have representing them at Eurovision. <laughs> she calls herself Bambi Thug, and she thinks she's really quite special. Do you know what makes me special? I'm a queer. <laughs> and I'm a witch! <laughs> Whoa. Island, uh, that's terrifying. But I'm, I'm intrigued. What else is Bambi Thug outspoken about other than being a non-binary witch? Well, it turns out, as well as being imbecilic, she's also a hypocrite because she's all about boycotting Israel but decided not to boycott this year's Eurovision over Israel's participation. Have a look. So I stand with anyone doing the boycott. I think if I wasn't in the competition, I would also be um, boycotting. There are a lot of moving parts. Hmm. There are a lot of moving parts. You yeah. know, there are so many Again. forms of bigotry, and you're probably guilty of all of them. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Uh, anyways, so Bambi Thug... Uh, she she claims she's special because she's queer. Now, I don't think that your, your sexual identity or your gender identity or whatever the fuck, I don't think that makes you special. If you're a fucking, if you're queer, non-binary, I don't give a fuck. Congratulations. Welcome to the world. Doesn't mean you get to tell us what to say or do. That's my big thing. Just don't tell us how to fucking... Don't tell people what to do. Don't try to control people. Don't try to, you know, support policies that that remove freedoms of speech and shit. It's like uh, people are going to say mean things to you whether or not you can say it on the internet anyway. We don't want to be like Canada who are sending people to, to prison for misgendering people, right? Like, fuck Canada. Fuck Drake. <laughs> African Canadian. Anyways, so, um, yeah, you, you, th this I, I don't find anything special about this person, and the music is not great. I'm not a big fan of. I was listening to some of this, and I don't know who this guy is. This must be her fucking gimp. Uh, but uh, yeah, it doesn't make you special to be queer. You're just queer. That's fine. And congratulations. Welcome to the world. I, 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 God bless you and all the things you do in your life. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Like, let people live. I, 
I have no problem with people being queer and her. I just think it's funny that she can have satanic images, be a witch, you know, this all this trans stuff, which is clearly political movement. Uh, this whole trans attaching themselves to the gay movement, um, which you see a lot of gay people like, dude, the trans people are out of control. What are we going to do? <laughs> what is it? Uh, Gays Against Groomers. Uh, is a organization that's picking up a lot of steam right now. But uh, I do want to shift over into uh, Roger Waters uh, because he's back at it, folks. He's back at it. Uh, um, and you know how we love to talk about Roger here. And it's so interesting to me that Roger Waters is um, – is now being touted as, you know, a, a hero when he was just not long, you know, like last year at this time, Roger Waters, uh, I believe, was being banned from Germany. And then now when you look at Germany, they have all these pro-Palestinian, all this anti-Israel shit. Like there's just uh, serious anti-Semitism that's coming on with it, which I, I got to say, and I agree with. Uh, with Mr. Roger Waters, which we're about to see his um, his uh, thing here. Let me look it up. Roger Waters. He just released a video not uh, like a day or so ago. So this is the video right here. Um, he does talk about how, you know, criticizing Israel and their decisions does not make you anti-Semitic, even if the Jewish lobby wants the uh, America to, to, to create it, make it illegal for you to criticize Israel or to compare them to the Nazis, like to take away freedoms of speech, to ban certain passages of the Bible because it says that Jesus killed, you know, that the Jews killed Jesus and such. To say that the Jews killed Jesus is, is considered anti-Semitic. That's bullshit. That's just a way to protect themselves. But again, these are people who've been shit on continuously you know, over hundreds and hundreds of years, you know, so I, you gotta put yourself in that position, like, hey, we don't want to be exterminated again, and that's understandable, like, a group of people, so they're gonna do whatever it takes, even if it means overstepping boundaries to not be exterminated, and if you're a Jew, especially if you're a Holocaust survivor, and you're seeing this anti-Jew, anti-Semitic, uh, a behavior that's happening on these campuses, especially here in America, when you thought that you could be a f openly free Jew here, and of course there's going to be people. Who, you know, America's full of racist and terrible people, but it's a mostly a safe and cool place to be if you're whatever religion and race, color, creed. Uh, you know, like I was just listening to God Sad or God Said. I don't know how you say it. He was on JRE, and he was talking about how he had it to escape from Li uh, Libya, not Libya, it's um, wherever Beirut is, Lebanon. He had to escape from Lebanon because he was a Jew and uh, he had to hide his Star of David. And then once he got here to Canada, he felt like he was welcomed and it was, it was free until October 7th. And then now he has to hide He's a Jew. He's not allowed to, you know, he, he can't walk on campus without security. I mean, this is happening everywhere uh, to Jews, and that's completely, completely outrageous and wrong. It's very wrong. So let's look at uh, this uh, Roger Waters video, and then we'll start wrapping up here. Ooh, Black Mirror. Mm, let's see that. All right, so let's listen to Roger. He's such a pompous cunt. May the 8th. May the 8th. Even First the way he said coffee. May the 8th, I don't like it. I was just looking at the news this morning, and there were very graphic pictures of brown shirts. Well, the American policemen, but they might as well be brown shirts. Clubbing people on the ground at UMass Amherst. I remembered last night when I was seeing this building up that five years ago, almost exactly on May the 4th, 2019, Mark Lamont Hill, Linda Sasser, Dave Zirin, and I took part in a, a panel at Amherst moderated by VJ Prashad. Anyway, they tried to stop it. They, 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 the Israeli lobby. 
Uh, the Israeli lobby also sh was shut down another, uh, I mean, last year even, he was getting um, shut down from speaking at events. And, like, he wasn't even supposed to be there. He was going to just be there via Zoom, I think. And you had the Israeli lobby shutting him down. You also had the Israeli lobby, of course, behind him being shut down in Germany. They have been coming after him for very many years. I believe since 2005, he's been fighting this fight. He's been, you know, going to Palestine and Gaza and the West Bank. He's been experiencing the the treatment and the, the apartheid uh, state that these uh, th that that uh, has become Palestine and the relationship between Palestine and uh, Israel. So he has been fighting this fight and it's just to me it's so interesting how fast people just turn right and and, and this is by design of some sort right they ha this is this isn't just all of a sudden now we're like hating jews and then before it was the cops and uh what it, you know and, and white people and it's like every this is like we're just constantly looking for that next enemy and uh, meanwhile, our country here is stealing our rights and looting our taxpayer dollars to fund foreign wars and to pay these international security companies to blow up brown children. <sighs> Anyways, so, uh, yeah, he's talking about how he was shut down with Mark Lamont Hill and uh, other people who are obviously pro-Palestinian uh, politically. Yeah used lawfare to try and prevent us from having that meeting. We did have the meeting, but isn't it interesting that now, five years later, um, when the tables are turning, God, I'm so proud of all the young people in all the universities all over the world who are now standing up and saying, this is over, Zionism is over. We do not want to live in a world that has no rules upon which to base our lives or any order okay so all this screaming of anti-semitism that Dershowitz and his loathsome like are still trying to manifest and Dershowitz he's talking about Alan Dershowitz who of course Alan Dershowitz is a high-priced lawyer um, 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 a Jew as well Harvard Law um, uh, professor, and also he uh, is supposedly on the Epstein list. Let's not forget that, friends. Oh, my sound thing died. Uh, Dershowitz, evidence of Epstein docs. Who framed me, he says. Dershowitz says, who framed me? Who did this? <coughs> so let's not forget that... Um, this guy, Jeffrey Epstein, who most likely was an Israeli agent who was conducting a blackmail sex scheme for political gain, and uh, that is perpetrated by the Jews. Fuck. <laughs> and some people call him the Zionist. I still am not sure what that means. Let's just... what? Why... Zionism is bad. Why, why is it bad? Zionism, good or bad? Oh, God, we're not reading all that shit. Get out of here. Anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. And which, you know, there are people who are saying that. They're saying if you're anti-Zionist, you're anti-Semitic. Um, I'm still not completely sure. Palestinian rights advocates denouncing the congressional resolution that equates anti-Zionism to anti-Semitism, calling it a dangerous measure that aims to curb free speech. I agree. Republican, blah, blah, blah. The symbolic resolution was framed as an effort to reject the drastic rise in anti-Semitism. Yes, I get it. Um, let's see. You know what? Let's ask... Let's ask fucking, uh, let's ask AI. Why is Zionism bad? Now, you guys can't see this, but I am asking Copilot, the Microsoft thing. Uh, let's see what it says. It's probably going to be like, no, we're not doing that shit. Go fuck yourself, bro. 
I'm waiting for the response. Uh, oh, it's really thinking. All right, while it thinks, <laughs> we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll move on with this. As an AI, I don't hold opinions. However, <laughs> I can tell you, it's moving really slow, that views on Zionism can be quite diverse and often depend on one's, you know, I'll let it, I'll let it work itself out here. It's going pretty slow. So let's, uh, let's listen to more of this asshole here. All over the United States of America, in fact, all over the world, ever, ever, it's a lie. It's always been a lie. Criticism of Israel and its genocidal policies has never been anti-Semitic. Never. It's not about Jews. Jews are human beings like Christians and agnostics and atheists like me and Muslims and Hindus and people who follow Confucius. Anything, it doesn't matter. This is about our love for our brothers and sisters. We will not back down. Zionism is over. Sorry, I didn't mean to shout. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Zionism is over. Roger has spoken. All right, AI has a... <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry for the cost, guys. Uh, let's get, I, you know what, this is looking familiar again. I, I've looked this up several times. It's just, I have the memory of a gnat. So Zionism is a nationalist movement that originated in the 19th century uh, with the goal to establishing a homeland for the Jewish people in Palestine. This movement led to the creation of the modern state of Israel. Critics of Zionism often point out to the displacement and suffering of the Palestinians who also have historically and cultural ties to the same land. They argue that the establishment and expansion of Israel has led to ongoing combat, blah, blah, blah. Supporters of Zionism, on the other hand, emphasize the historical and religious significance of, of the religion of the Jewish people and see the movement as a response to centuries of persecution. They argue that Israel serves as a necessary refuge for and a symbol of Jewish self-determination. Okay, so there you go. Uh, just a refresher, just in case people were confused like me. Uh, Zionism is just the the idea of, uh, of displacing the Palestinians. <laughs> So I can see why people are like we're not we're we're just against Zionism we're not against, we're the against uh, the expansion of Israel and uh, a lot of these people are just against Israel in general and again a lot of these students who are marching have no I probably couldn't even point out Gaza on a map so it's very interesting to see what's going on with this movement and of course Eurovision over here doing the most. Uh, saying they're not political, yet they will ban Russia for invading Ukraine, uh, which is stupid. And I think it's stupid that they're not allowing the artists to wear what they want and say what they want on stage, uh, even if they are Satanist queer witches <laughs> or, you know, uh, anybody or, or people who just want to wear the scarves. You know, I mean, it, it, it just it is a. Uh, it's stupid that they're trying to say they're not political when they obviously are. So, you know, Eurovision, whatever, do your thing. But uh, I think it's hilarious that the left is so scrambling over all this shit. <laughs> it's like all this browbeating, all this, you know, fucking moral grandstanding and virtue signaling is all sort of coming back to bite them in the ass. Because what do you say, right? Like, what do you say to this, these these kids? What do you say to these kids who are fucking clearly saying anti-Semitic shit when just a few years ago they were in the streets burning shit down in the name of black people, right? Like, so all of a sudden now we hate Israelis. And guess what? Israelis aren't all white. They're not all white Jews like here in America. There's a lot of brown skin Israelis. They live in the fucking desert. So to sit here, it's just the hypocrisy, the, the shining the light on this hypocrisy is just so sweet to me. 
It's yummy. Tastes delicious. Anyways, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me again. My goodness. Uh, and uh, I do want to get back to the stream again. We will be doing that. I've been talking to some guests who are going to be coming on. Offbeat's going to be coming on. I'm talking to a game developer. Uh, not a game developer, but a, a somebody who does sound and music for very popular games on Steam, which I can't mention right now until we get this booked in. So we're talking to some guests, and of course, we're going to be doing news and stuff. But I am in the middle of a move right now, and I actually am probably going to have to go over to the house and do some work over there today, which I feel like shit, and I should just be resting. But whatever. You got to do what you got to do, baby. So uh, I will see you guys next week. I love you guys. Be good to your fellow human beings. And HJ's for everybody. Bye-bye.